for this tier list. Just let's just make sure we understand. This is not 100% fact. This is assumptions and guesses based on what I saw in the PTS on the test and what I'm seeing from patch notes and stuff where I think people are going to be. There's a lot of stuff that probably hasn't been tested and we haven't seen yet. There's a lot of weird builds that are going to come up. A lot of the poop gods are still going to be poop. They aren't going to magically just pop off. That's that's not going to happen. Um, Achilles for me is still going to be A+. Plus. We're, these, like a lot of gods, we aren't, we aren't seeing a crazy amount of changes. Agni, I think, is still top tier A+. Plus. AMC, I think, is still poop. I don't even care what changes you get from this god in this uh, from this patch because he's immobile and he just dies. Aposh, I put an A tier. Simple. Once again, as I do all the other tier lists, I do this one as... You know at a quick pace i will then break down the higher tiers the ss tier the s tier and the a plus tiers for you guys who want to know why the gods are there specifically if i don't cover it amaterasu now if this gooseberry item starter pops off and it makes clearing easier and you see ama not having to go golden blade anymore and she's able to grab a defensive item like a frostbound or something like that i think she could get played a lot in the meta so i'm going to put her in a plus with the potential of her moving up um a little bit more i wouldn't be surprised if it is as strong as it should be having free clear not having to go golden blade that you see her higher but remember the last time she was buffed the last time a warriors were supposed to come back they didn't come back so we'll see on her is still pretty beast i like on her a lot the big thing with on her in this next patch i'm actually gonna move meh, i kind of want to move him up to s i think i think a plus might be undervaluing him a bit i think i'm going to um so this isn't because of gooseberries this is because of bow so gods that have one core damage ability the bow will remove 1.5 seconds off of that ability every time you use it essentially so on her is a two spammer and then he autos if your two is on a six second cooldown as an aa build or a seven second cooldown as an aa build because you're getting this free time off and you're able to pick up a cooldown shaman buff off of the new extra buff so you have purple you have 10 percent cooldown you'll have you know your bow your two is gonna be spammable and i think that's gonna increase a god like on her strengths a lot like he's just gonna peak anubis i believe anubis is in pretty much the same spot eh b tier i think anubis is doing enough damage to not be c tier but to a mobile still to be a tier alqua this is where alqua is already performing i would say alqua is a top five jungler in current smite for ranked this is all ranked by the way with the bow his three is on a two second cooldown so you can pop the two three auto three or you know pop the two three one three and the person's instantly dead there's no reacting to it it is insane cooldowns i have a video on youtube it's it's over the top the bow is going to be very very good for that early mid game afro i put down here in b tier situational you have to build a team and play around her the whole time apollo saw big buffs with the meta we're in in smite smitesource.com empire to check smite builds um so with the current meta of smite there's a lot of split pushing so if your team sucks apollo can split push stronger than ever before on top of that they just gave him super buffs his alt is easier to land his mana consumption in the alt is way lower his one is almost impossible to miss his two now is magical protection so he's crazy tanky to any kind of ganks or any kind of guardians or anyone going on him and his autos and his passive have the uh increased travel speed so not attack speed they travel faster it pretty much impossible to miss your autos on apollo he's very very good going into this meta arachne remember this is a ranked tier list i said the arachne, arachne changes were trash i even told them when i saw these these notes i saw i played on this uh, pts a couple months ago i told him i was like the arachne changes are worthless i was a little wrong the two change to arachne was a lot more significant than i thought because it's instant with arachne's auto chain she autos autos and then big swings it's a wind up so hitting that third auto to get the third stun could always be interrupted or you could walk away from it anything could happen in that wind up now it's an insta auto it's auto auto it's boom you pop your two there's two autos go off before anyone can react they're stunned you have a crazy advantage that's a huge damage spike over top of them not doing any damage if they're beading it you can pretty much disengage it instantly because the spiders are still going to be up so there's a a weird power shift for arachne in 1v1s and even 2v2s that i didn't expect on top of that you're able to go silver branch and get max stacks on silver branch very easily without a full attack speed build because of the attack speed you get from the shaman buff if you don't know what the shaman buff is it's an extra buff on top of your regular buff so arachne would pick up speed have normal speed buff and then have an additional 10 percent attack speed 
so you can go a whole lot of items you can go serrated you don't have to have eye but you will probably have eye of the jungle there's a bunch of builds i was going a crit arachne build with a bumba's hammer trying to have infinite two spam and it was working so there's a lot of stuff with arachne that can go off in lower ranks guaranteed plat and below she will run your games if the person is not stupid higher than that she's gonna be playable and ranked as she always has been she's still not quite where i want her to be because her three spiders suck on jungle clear but she's definitely a thousand percent better with the two change aries aries has already got a buff this last patch in in the mini patch in 10.7 he got a damage buff they made his one have like no cooldown in this next patch they hyper buffed him they made his two one of the best buffs in the game for a team and his autos are hitting harder so in between his chains he's just doing more damage in lane he's way more relevant as a sport they've also made it so his ult has mitigations when he's casting it he's just a very tanky very good support character now whereas before he was just a damage dealer now he's a mix of both artemis people are gonna like this i think artemis will run your matches if you're not a potato with artemis you get 40 percent cooldown earlier than before because the build on Artemis is ability Artemis. It's blue stone, transcend it's Jotuns. As soon as you finish the Jotuns, you have 40% cooldown because you get the 10% cooldown from the Shaman Bow. Pair that with the shard that gives cooldown and the bow. Your three is on a three second cooldown without the horn shard. Three second cooldown without the horn shard. With the horn shard, you can get three threes off. I three ulted three on a Kronos while he was trying to cast his ult and I killed him before his ult went off. Artemis should be playable and the damage should be ridiculous. Especially in lower ranks. Ardeo, I think Ardeo is still ass. I, I don't know why you would play Ardeo. I'm putting her down in the seats here at this point. Athena got a buff. I like Athena a lot. I don't think the buff pushes her to S tier. I think she's still a very, very good support character. Uh, Atlas really doesn't get played too much right now. He's all right, but nowhere near as good as the other supports. Um, I'd actually probably put him down in the B tier at this point. There's just no real reason to play him. A uh, Wheelix, I'm gonna throw into A tier. She's a good counter god. She does do a lot of damage, but with the item changes, she doesn't one shot as easily. So I have her in A tier. Baba Yaga still nuts. Hyper tanky Baba Yaga still cracking, still popping S tier. Bacchus, I actually like Bacchus in this meta. He's been doing really well. The pressure he creates in lane and his team fight potential is high, plus the ability to build a damage item and do a lot of damage is there. You get to a point where late game, you can half health plus a squishy as a support, which is crazy. Bacchusura. Bacchus is another one where I think we're going to see him spike a little bit higher than before. His shaman buff is going to be the attack speed buff. Uh, he'll get free 10% attack speed. So he also can hit the cap attack speed from Silver Branch very easily without having to have full attack speed items. He also has hyper clear with the gooseberries. You don't have to go Golden Blade on Bakasura. You can go first item Hasten. Finish the gooseberries at the same time as the Hasten. And pretty much be able to kill anybody on the fucking map. Uh, which makes his early game good, which it never was before. His farm is still going to be better than every other gods in the game, as he has been for the whole year. His ability to invade is going to be there. It's going to be free. But he's going to be invading with a hastened, which means if you run at him, he can just turn and kill you if you aren't the right god. I think Baka should be fucking broken in this meta. Fully broken. Baron, I like Baron as a support. Bastet, I think, is one of the best junglers in the game still. Got uh, the ability now to shift your build around is there, where before it was kind of a standard build you were going all the time. You get free cooldown in your build now with the shaman buff so you can swap out a cooldown item and get whatever the fuck you want in that slot. Bologna, I don't truly believe that AA warriors are going to come back. If they do, cool. I'm down for a meta shift. I'm sorry, tired of seeing all these gods, but I don't think they're going to come back, so I'm going to leave her in A tier. Kabrakin as a support got a little bit more annoying because his three has no cooldown, but as a jungler, he's no better. So I'm going to leave it on A tier. Kama, I don't see getting many buffs. I much of a change out of this. I'm leaving A tier. Serb, I'm putting down in the B tier. He doesn't really fit in any roles right now. Cern as an ADC, I still think he's very good. Pair him with a shaman buff and more attack speed. He's going to be doing a lot of work with the AAs early. So that's going to be something to watch for. 100% they do. PTS is all pros playing AA gods. We'll see. Um, if they come back, dope. I, I'm tired of the warrior meta we've seen. I'd be down for an AA meta. I just know every time we've expected an AA meta to come out from warriors, it hasn't happened yet. Um, I do think 
that ranked could be filled with AA assassins in the solo lane because of double golden blades. You'll be able to outclear any warrior pretty much as soon as you get those two things online. So you'll you'll take an L for the first like five minutes and then you'll just power clear. You'll proxy and you'll rotate. And you'll play like a jungler, uh, which could be a really sick style of gameplay to see in ranked. Could also suck. Who knows? Chalk, still poo poo. Not quite C tier. I don't get mad if you play him, but I don't think he's good. Chunga, lower tier, but not bad. I'll put her in A tier. Karan is the best support in the game. He is unkillable. He has one of the best ultimates we've seen out of a support in a really since like Maui, but Maui's ult was nerfed. Um, his shield that he gives is nuts. His movement is crazy, and he has a silence. Silence is really, really OP CC to have because nobody ever beats that. Charybdis is underperforming. She's been bad for a little while, so we're leaving her in B tier. Chernobog got a major, major buff to his... Uh, the way his one travels out, it travels faster. And then the two is easier to combo. The two also, well, they did something else to the two. It like persists longer or something. Um, they, they they buffed him enough that you feel it and it feels really, really good. So I like Chernobog going into this meta. Another god with an attack speed stim, able to hit cap stacks on Silver Branch while not having full attack speed items. That's the big thing you have to realize from this. Oh, the one slows now. That's what it was. The one is a slow. The two has a four second. That's what it was. Almost forgot. The two has a, ha a seven second cooldown with no items. So they buff the two. They reduce the cooldown by half. So you can use it to combo somebody or use it to like, poke and then combo. You have a lot to do with the two. Um, the one slowing is going to make hitting that combo even easier. And then, like I was saying, the Shaman buff giving 10% attack speed makes it so you can drop an attack speed item, go a different item in that slot, and it's very, very powerful. And that's... I can't get that point across enough. Builds won't change dramatically, but having one item difference could make the game feel a whole lot different to you. Chiron... Or, sorry, Chiron, I think is pretty good as an ability hunter. I think I'm going to leave him in A tier. I'd literally rather have an Artemis ability than a Chiron. Kronos, I believe Kronos jungle is very strong. I haven't lost on him yet. I don't like him in other roles. I don't like him as an ADC, but I do really, really like him if a good jungler is playing him. He's got a kit that can be played like an assassin. He has a reset, so he's fairly safe. He has a huge CC out of the stun. He's got a lot of damage, a lot of cooldown, the ability to split push. That is all valuable for ranked. Cleo, I think Cleo's decent, but her lack of CC makes me put her lower. Cthulhu is sucks. His kit needs to be reworked. I think about his kit is good. Um, his ultimate, he dies in it. The rest of his kit doesn't do enough. Don't like Cullen. Or sorry, Cthulhu. Cullen, I'll put an A-plus tier. I like his pressure that he gives in ranked in the early mid game, and then I don't think his late game team fight is that bad. I think it's all right. Cupid, low clear, putting her into B tier. She, or he's struggling, not her. Dodgy. Dodgy's going to B tier because she's bugged. Nobody's talked about the bug. I haven't seen it mentioned at all. Her auto attack canceling on her one is not working correctly. Um... I don't know what causes it, but it is not consistent. It feels like shit, so she's B tier. Danza, I believe Danza's pretty good. A tier as a, a auto attack hunter. Disco, I think, is fairly good. Really weird to play in ranked if you aren't playing with somebody you can rely on carrying. Erlang Shen sucks. He just dies. He doesn't do enough. He has great CC, but outside of the CC, he himself doesn't do anything. E set, I'm gonna put E set in B tier as a support. I wouldn't play her in any other role at all as a support. I say B tier because if you don't have the pressure, if it gets flipped on you, you pretty much insta lose the game. Fafnir, I believe Fafnir's buff is gonna be cracked. I think he's very good. They gave him the minute long ult at max rank. I just like him as a support god. He's safe, he's hard to kill, and he's one of the best objective burners and Phoenix pushers there is in the game as a support. Fenrir, A tier. Farms idiots, gets farmed if you're not playing against idiots. It's difficult to play a Fenrir into anybody who knows how to defend a dive. So that can be rough. Freya is mass performing right now. I think she's one of the best ADCs in the game for ranked. As soon as you get hastened, you should get a free kill on the person in your lane. And then it's over. You just snowball off of that. Ganesh. I love Ganesh's CC currently. I think his team fight presence is higher than almost every other sport in the game. The ultimate is annoying. Nobody wants to walk through it. Nobody will walk through it. The damage that you're getting. And then if you pair that, this is, I haven't mentioned this yet. We've talked on over supports quickly. That bow food starter that everyone's going to have, it's going to be good on supports too. Lower cooldown on any of your main abilities on any God is going to be huge. So you're going to see a lot of supports build the bow if in ranked when they're looking to spam. So be prepared for that. Geb, I think Geb is the best support in the game. I think he had, going into this patch, I think he has the highest win rate as a support. Um, his clear is better than it should be. He's 
Pretty much going to make it so everyone's unkillable on this team. Pair that with the bow. So he's going to have cool, shorter cooldowns on his you know, shields or his knockups, whatever he wants. Probably his shields. Person's going to have infinite shields. Now, the reason I think he does so well is because most players either don't want to build erosion or don't know it exists. Erosion reduces the shield that is given out if you're in the in, close to it uh, by a lot. They did buff the range of erosion, so that could have some counterplay to Geb. I think that was their idea, but most people just don't build it. I have to ask for it to be built in lower games. I'm sure they don't even know what it does. So I believe Geb's going to stay up here. Gilgamesh, I'm going to put in the eighth here. I just don't think he's that great. Same with Guan. Same Hachi's kind of moved down but not quite to a tier yet a plus still hades performing about the same decent in the soul lane but not that great hebo as a jungler is still very good hebo with bow in the jungle has no cooldown on the one hebo's one has a two second cooldown just for whatever reason i don't know why Hyrus did that so your one has a 0.5 second cooldown have fun heimdall i'm gonna make a a, a prediction on heimdall um, could end up being wrong, but I'm going to do it. So Heimdall in an A build meta is insanely strong, but only when transcendence can be built. Now that you can get free 10% attack speed from the shaman buff, it opens up a slot. That slot can go to transcendence early and they buffed Aussie, which is one of the best metas Heimdall was ever in was when you could go starter transcendence Aussie. Everything's lining up for Heimdall to be played and be very, very strong. You can hit cap Silver Branch stacks, uh, if I'm not mistaken. We did it on the PTS with a Transcendence and a Titan's Bane, or maybe it was no Transcendence. Maybe it was just a Titan's Bane. So you can swap the Titan's Bane to Transcendence early and then get a, a Dominance or whatever you want uh, and still have max Silver Branch stacks, which is fucking crazy. Hell, underperforming, too easy to counter. Hera, she's just an alt bot and her alt isn't good enough to be higher than A. Hercules, I think he's pretty average. Too easy to counter with anti-heal and hard CC. Horus, I still like a lot. I'm going to fall. He's dropped down a little bit. I think Guardians are performing better than Warrior Support, so he's going to go to A+, but he's still hyper-aggressive and very good at lower level ranked. Ho Yi. I don't know if Gooseberries is enough to up Ho Yi's clear. I didn't try it, and I didn't see anybody play it. I don't believe it will be enough, so I'm going to leave him in A tier. If I'm wrong, and it makes it so he can clear and compete with these other gods, he'd bump up. Hunbat's still kind of the, the base jungler there is in the game. Ishtar's fallen off since we've fallen out of crit metas. Echel is still performing really well. She's just hard for you guys to position. Izanami, for ranked, I like Izanami a lot. She guarantees lane. She doesn't need Gooseberry. She guarantees lane pressure from level one, which is really valuable. Janice, if it's a good Janice player, a very good Janice player, one of the best mages in the game. Jingwei, still just hyper safe ADC. Yorm, falling off a bit from where he was at the beginning of the year, but... With his cooldown meta, where he's going to have a lot of cooldown early, I think he'll perform a little bit better. Kali. I don't know. Kali is the highest win rate god of the game before these nerfs. So she was nerfed in this patch. Like, directly, she was nerfed for her abilities. I think the power from her three was nerfed and something else, her ult damage was nerfed. But they're giving her a free golden blade. So... With my Baka predictions, Kali should follow the same idea. Hasten first item. Golden berries for clear. Don't need a golden blade. You have Hasten before everyone else. Hasten into Kins. She should on paper still be winning every game because she didn't lose enough power to be considered a hard nerf. Like a, That nerf alone wouldn't have moved her down in the first place. Adding in this gooseberry stuff and the extra attack speed... That's a little ridiculous. Kepri, I like Kepri a lot right now. If you understand engaging as a Kepri player, if you only sit back and look to all people, don't play Kepri. King Arthur got a buff. He's unkillable. With a full tank build, he's unkillable. Um, I don't know if he's S tier though. I think he might be. I'm going to throw it in here since it's a prediction patch. Uh, pizza, whatever, tier list. Every King Arthur that built full defense on the PTS was unkillable. Everyone I hit, I, four, five of us would hit them and they were unkillable. They were, you were regening way too much from the buffed, uh, buff changes and just being tanky. Uh, they also buffed a couple of defense items, so have fun. Kakulkin, I think Kakulkin is the most underrated mid laner in Smite. I love Kakulkin in mid. 
The damage from the one poly procs are very high. I can still hit 1,000. One, what, the, what did I hit? 1,300 power or something like that? 1,200 power? Some crazy amount of power you can still happen on Kikulkin, where a lot of mages are struggling to hit 1,000. Kumba sucks balls. Uh, don't know why you would ever play Kumba in current smite. I just think you're drunk if you're playing Kumba. Kuzinbo is still popping off. I love him as a support, kind of as a solo. Lancelot, I think, is still lower tier. Definitely in ranked lower tier. Wouldn't recommend it. You have to go hybrid build. Loki, base tier A. He's just not doing a whole lot, but he's not doing too little. Martikaris got a fat nerf. They took 48% of his scaling away from his ult. So 48% of his scaling. I think we did the math. It, I mean, you're talking like... I think you're talking like 300 damage off the alt or something like that. 200 to 300 damage off the alt. However, it was going to end up being. So it's a lot of damage, but I still think he's going to be really good. They also nerfed the two cooldown. Um, and I don't know if they nerfed the three. So I'm going to leave Martikaris up here in A+. Out of SS tier, down two ranks to A+. There's a chance he's still top five hunter and in S tier. Maui, after his nerfs, has just been extremely average. Medusa still can't clear the wave without going bluestone, so she's struggling. Mercury, I believe Mercury is still very good. I don't know that the gooseberries makes him crazy, but following the Bach on Kali strat, if you go rage first item on Mercury and you get gooseberries, you have a huge spike window of damage that you didn't have before, and people will not build Spectral in their first two items. It'll be very rare that Spectral is built in the first two items. So you get this jump, this lead, this advantage. You can go ahead and start doing objectives a little bit earlier. And then once those Spectrals do start coming online, you should be nearing a much ne full, like close to full build, a much nearer full build. And you can sell your crit if you wanted to. Uh, so Merc's going to have some options in this patch, which is why I'm going to put him in S here. I also think he's over underestimated. The, the Spectral's overvalued right now currently, and Mercury's already doing better on live before this patch. Merlin is still very good as a mid laner, just his damage output is great. He's just a little unsafe. Morgan Le Fay is still one of my favorite mages in the mid lane. Her damage output is crazy. With the bow, her one is even crazier. So have fun spamming your one. Mulan, I think, is average. Uh, late game just kind of falls off. Naja, I think, is a CC. Jungler is still solid. Pressure is still there. A+. Plus. Neath. You gotta go into A tier. I don't think Neath is bad. I just don't think she does enough. And we're not in a Hunter mid better yet. Nemesis got a buff, but the buffs don't do shit. She's A tier. Nike, really high win rate. So I'm gonna leave Nike in A+. Plus. I can't can't bring myself to put Nike in S tier. I, I can't do it. Nox is a support, A plus, or A tier. Anything else, probably lower uh, for most people. If you get hit 90% of your 2-1 combos, you can play it in mid, then it's, you know, up there. Nua. I'm putting Nua in S tier. If you're a, 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 if you get mid and you suck at the game or you get mid and you suck at mid or you don't know what to do. Nuwa's ult will hit for a thousand and one hundred damage when you have five items. So the right five items. So just that alone should make you relevant in a team fight. Meaning you can be useful and not trash just by pressing four and you can't miss it right that's the plus okay the other side to her is if you are scared very unconfident don't know what you're doing in the mid lane you can clear from your tower by throwing your two and your one out meaning you might not full clear the wave early but you'll get xp you can literally sit back never get ganked and you'll still get golden xp fog got buffed so when you're in team fights she can move faster in it she's valuable she should be played but you can't be hyper aggressive on her unless you're very good. So th she's got two sides. If you're really, really good at her, you can be hyper aggressive and still do all that stuff. If you're really, really bad at mid, you can play her and do all that stuff. Your choice. Odin, mass underperforming. We're going to move him down here to B tier as a counter god. He's just countering. That's about all he's doing. Oleron sitting in the A tier, not really doing too much. Osiris got massive buffs. I'm being told by chat that in pro scrims or whatever pro streams, whatever they're doing, customs they're playing AA warriors in the soul lane i do believe you're never ever ever going to kill osiris that is tanky i don't know how you're gonna do it i don't know that he's broken in ss tier but i know you're never gonna kill him it's just not gonna happen so we're gonna put him in s tier pele pele's buffs were over the top there's nothing else to it if you haven't seen the changes to Pele, your fuel, which is what you use when you pop your three, 
is now recharged by your one based on each person, God, creep, whatever, based on hitting something. At max rank, I think it's like 10 fuel for every person that it hits. So if you had a full wave, you get full fuel. So you can basically run around with your three at its second rank, max damage, max movement speed, and be on somebody, throw your one into them in the wave. It'll regen back up and keep, never fall off and keep ticking. And then you have another one to do it again. Pair that with the bow. Your one is a shorter cooldown, so you get a third one off, meaning you have infinite fuel to move around the map and to move around a team fight. Then they decided to fuck everybody and give her an extra auto on her ultimate. I have no fucking clue where this came from. I think Pele was already a fine god, AA plus easily. They this it only moves her up, only puts her over the top. So have fun playing against Pele in 99% of your games and getting farmed and ranked. What's up, Kabi? Thank you for the 61 months, dude. Persephone is still trash. She's going all the way down to C tier. There's no reason to play her. Poseidon chilling at A tier just because he's not safe enough. Um, I do like him as a god, but but Aegis and not being safe enough. Kind of puts him in A. As a jungler, I could see an argument in A+, plus, but there's just better gods. You'll get farmed by good assassin players all day. Raw, Raw that can position well, A+. Plus. Raws that hit their ults all the time, A+. Plus. Raws that don't, C, B tier. Raijin got buffs. I think Raijin still has the same problems. Um, Raijin's buffs are weird. They He gets attack speed from leveling his ult, and then his autos reduce his cooldowns on his 1, 2, and his 3 by 0.2 seconds. Um... So he has the ability to spam, but you're talking about a god that has a delayed two. So you have to throw out the two. You have a one that's a channel and you have an alt that's a channel. You, they also made the three, so it casts a little bit faster, but it's still not instant. I think the three chains should have been an instant dash. And I think the channels on the one and the ultimate are too long. And that's why he struggles and they didn't fix all that. So I'm going to leave Raijin in a lower tier-ish. Um... I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and bump him from A to A+, plus just to be generous, but I kind of want to put him in A. Rama, I think Rama is still really good. I'd probably have Rama in A+. Plus. I think Rama is a solid god. Rat, still a solid jungler. Okay, solo laner. Ravana is still very, very good, but I see people underperforming on him consistently since he got reverted back, so I'm going to leave him in A+. Plus. Scylla, I think, is one of the best mid lane gods in the game still, and just nobody values her for whatever reason. You one-shot people with a 2-1 polyproc. And there are not a lot of mages that can throw a CC out and just insta kill somebody with it. So I would put Scylla in S tier. You should learn how to play her if you like to carry your games out of mid lane. Sir Ket, I think. I don't think she changes much with this patch. She's still really good. You can go back to building crit still, but I don't think anything changes for her. Set A plus for me in the jungle. With the nerfs they gave him, I don't know if it nerfs Sigil set mid or Sigil set ADC, but we're going to leave him in A plus for now. Shiva A plus as a support or a solo laner. More as a solo laner than anything. Scotty saw some buffs. I'll leave her in A. She's not lower than A, I don't think. Uh, she can be played. The buffs are good, but you need to be a good Scotty player. They made it so her three, if you have her three buff, you are now immune to slows, which is kind of a big deal, but not insane. Sobek, I like Sobek as a support. He's really aggressive, has a lot of setup. So A plus. Soul. They buff mannequins. So late game mannequins mace, the AA one, has attack speed now. Soul likes to build mannequins. Good soul, not good soul players. A lot of ranked exploiters on soul play mannequins to have guaranteed lane control. So now that's going to build into something more valuable. So I'm going to put her in S tier. This might be a little over the top. If you want to argue A plus, I would have no problem just throwing her down in A plus. Wukong, safe solo. Does his thing, still A+. plus. Surter, sucks ass. No idea why the fuck you're playing Surter. I, I can't find one reason for anyone to play Surter. Okay? Not one reason. His ultimate is not good. His regen on his passive is good. The rest of his kit in teamfights is not good. So why the fuck are you playing Surter? Stop playing it. Susano is still cracked. I believe Susano is still one of the better junglers in the game. Top five, maybe number six. Sylvanas, uh, lower tier. Uh, you can't really do a lot on Sylvanas right now. I think they need to buff his three, his pull, to make like to just be better, longer range, like so he could hit crazy pulls or something to make him better. Uh, until then, he's a Terra. I'm gonna throw an A tier. I don't like her all that much. Her ult isn't enough to turn team fights. Thanatos A plus, just a high risk, high reward god. Uh, the Morrigan, I don't. I'm not really a fan of the Morrigan. I'm gonna put Morgan down to B tier. I just don't think she's doing that great because she doesn't one shot as easily. They nerfed Thor's. What do they nerf Thor as well? Uh, his one? They nerfed Thor's one? I think they nerfed his one's damage and his ult scaling or something. 
So he's losing a little bit of damage in this patch, but I, I believe he'll still be really strong. Yeah, his one in his ult, I think, lost scaling and damage in a way. Oh! I'm doing it, dude. I'm doing it. In my world, Thoth is already one of the most annoying ranked mid laners. Just right now, on live, before this patch hits. You can't deal with a good Thoth player. The ults can literally one-shot you. I got one-shot by Wyatt the other day. You can clear the lane for free. No one should be able to contest you. You can just sit back and you can't die. The biggest thing where Thoth starts to fall off is when you leave laning phase and you start going in the jungle. Your positioning becomes key. It's easy to dive a Thoth because he doesn't have a hard CC and he's got a dash which doesn't leave the ground. We can't go for walls. Besides that one point, any lane fight is heavily in favor of Thoth. Any fight where he can sit near something safe, a tower, um, you know, his front line's really strong, so they can't get through it. He's unstoppable. And they decided to buff him. They, all, they upped his ult damage. He already can one-shot on live. Now he can 100% one-shot. They gave him percent pen in his kit. No fucking idea where that came from. So he's going to be one of the few mages that can deal with tanks just on their own all the time. And the rest, and then there's autos. They buffed his, his wall, right? So his autos hit harder or some shit. Uh, you, yeah, you didn't say they added percent pen to Thal's passive? Yeah, I, I don't know where what they were smoking. Uh, we know how valuable pen is right now. And that's not going to go towards his cap. That's percent pen in his kit. That's not part of his items. That's, that's not part of like uh, the buff, uh, you know, from, from Shaman buff. So, you know, he should be kind of chilling. Should be just doing his thing. Uh, the whole game. So have fun playing against Thoth. I, I'm actually dreading playing against Thoth a lot as a jungler. Tiamat, A+, plus, hyper tanky, still really good, does a lot of damage. You have to build hybrid Tiamat. Same way you build Baba Yaga, hybrid Tiamat, super strong, unkillable. Sukiyomi sucks butt cheeks, dude. Don't play Sukiyomi. Um, I'll say B tier because he's better in lane than he is in the jungle. But even in lane, you should be bullied by anyone who knows what they're doing. Tier, he's fallen off a bit since the beginning of the year, but he's still kind of just doing his thing in solo, A+, plus, or A tier. I don't see Ul going crazy in this patch or being any better than before in lane. He's still going to have, you know, his lane clear issues. The bow might help him a little bit with his ability to spam his stun. Will that be enough? I don't know. Vamana. They gutted Vamana when they nerfed his ult. Vamana sucks. Trash tier. You shouldn't be playing Vamana. Vulcan, just not safe enough to consistently play. So we're going to put Vulcan, oops, put Vulcan down in the A tier. Shibalake, still not doing anything. If, if. If what I said about Heimdall is correct, which I hope it is because I like Heimdall, then Shibalanke would follow suit. Shibalanke with a Transcendence build into an AA build was the only way you could play Shibalanke. We haven't had that meta in years. So if that meta is possible or comes back, not saying it will, just saying it seems possible right now. Uh, you definitely can hit attack speed cap while having Transcendence. That is a thing. So maybe we see Shibalanke move up. Um, based on the Heimdall prediction, I'm going to put Shibalanke in A+. But if I'm wrong, both these gods are going to get shifted down. Shing Ten, just a safe support. Doesn't do much else other than be safe. Yamoja, too long cooldown on the ultimate and everything for ranked. Ymir, they buffed it, but they buffed his walls. Cooldown, I don't know what drugs whoever was on that decided to buff him. I don't know what they're doing. Yu Wang, I still like as a mid laner. Very safe, very easy to play. Still does a shit ton of damage. Zeus, poop. Zeus Juice not coming back in this meta, boys. Uh, you'd have to build a whole team comp around him to really play him. And then John Kui. John Kui is one of the worst gods in Smite. I'm sorry. Period. Oh, Weekend, he's tanky. No, he's not. He is not tanky. His passive is not making him unkillable. Eventually, you get to a point where even having cap defense, which you're not doing on John Kui, by the way, you're not going to have cap defense. It doesn't, like, once you have cap defense, it's still going to be countered by the amount of pen late game that mages and hunters are going to have. So no matter what, you won't compete with the Lake King. But you're not getting cap defense. You're sitting around 200. You're going to die. You have to be too close to do damage. You're going to die. John Kui C tier. That's the tier list. That's it. Did I title it correctly? Updated tier list 10.8. Boom. There it is, buckaroos. There it fucking is. In all its glory. The tier list. Oh, that was the thing about Ama. I, dude, I put Ama in A+. Ama might be S tier. I knew there was something I was forgetting about her. I'll leave her here for now, but I'm going to mention this just so no one can roast me. She got attack speed on her one. 
when she has the one buff, she now has attack speed. I don't know why the fuck they did that. <clears throat> I don't think Wukong's S tier. I think you're trolling. I think you're drunk. I don't think Wukong's S tier. I think Wukong is average at everything he does, but annoying with everything he does. I just feel like Wukong's team fight is not as good as it should be. He's just annoying. Him existing is annoying. Ama might mess some stuff up. Ama might kind of go nuts with the buff to the one. I forgot about that part. I knew she was buffed. I just couldn't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. Thoth also got a buff to jungle camps clear. So you clear faster. You know, your level one clear is faster. So that's huge. Wait, no. Is it is it 25% damage through the wall? Or is it just 25% damage on the one? On Thoth buff. I don't remember. It might not be a good level one clear, but after that, you'll clear faster if, it, if it's not on the one. Oh, it is the one. Okay, so the one just hits Scream Starter. So you definitely clear faster in the jungle now. Your level one clear on the speed purple combo is going to be very fast. Yeah, I, they buffed the hell out of Thoth and Thoth didn't need it. Thoth easily could be argued, could like current patch could be argued as A plus like level if it's a good player. Is the job of warrior to be annoying? Um, in general, yes, but I'm talking about just like existing annoying, not like, oh, that damage is annoying or, oh, him being unkillable is annoying. It's just like his kid is annoying to one person. You know what I mean? Like he can go run at one person and be annoying, but he can be killed and you're not going full tank Wukong. That's where my argument comes in. I think the warriors that are going to be peaking are the full tank warriors. I don't think it's your soul eater warriors. I, I even right now, I don't think I like soul eaters meta and they're good, but that makes them a little bit less tanky. And it's noticeable in the late game where if you get to 30 minutes and you're a full tank build, you're kind of doing whatever you want. I mean, if you're going frostbound Wukong, your laning phase is affected, right? So you can definitely just kind of get run at and poked at. A lot. I will say that if we are in, I mean, Frostbound's going to be meta for, you know, Osiris and a lot of the AA warriors. If we're in a Frostbound meta with full tank being the follow up items, warriors are going to be fucking annoying. They are going to be super annoying to play with and against and around. Okay. Soul Eater has nothing to do with jungle creeps taking extra damage. Why is Persephone in C? She's ass. She doesn't do anything. She hasn't been good in... They ha she hasn't been good since they changed her passive. Because her passive was the most broken passive we've ever seen in the game. And they made her passive worthless. She went from having the best passive in Smite's history to the worst passive in Smite's history. How can you one-shot with Scylla? You one them? You two? Throw your two out? You auto and you two and they're dead. Late game. One, two combo late game should be around like 1,600, 1,700 damage. And your poly should be hitting your four to 500. So it'll one-shot late game. That's without your soul reaver or your soul gem or your divine, like what are, any of your other items adding into that. That's just off of your flat abilities. No, it's a one shot because it all happens at the same time. Your one gets thrown, your two flies while the one is throwing and then you auto in between that mix and they're dead instantly. It's one, it's a one shot. Or you can just, the ult will one shot still. If you have the right power build, your ult will still just one shot somebody. If you, if you want a true one shot. I love the mage builds with Book of Thoth into Spear of Deso. It feels good. Now with extra cooldown too from the Shaman buff, you aren't going to need Kronos. You aren't going to need to have the cooldown starter in mid. You're going to be able to have free cooldown 20, 30% early. And bow. Yeah, and bow. So on someone like Scylla or Janus, your two on both gods is going to be on a three to four second cooldown. Have fun. Persephone's old passive was when you died, you could run around for 10 seconds in a death state and kill people, doing 80% damage. Yeah, I don't know what high res was, was on, dude. I couldn't tell you what drugs they were smoking. We're out here with passes that give you like five power, and we have Persephone able to run around killing people for 10 seconds after she died. I don't know on Solus Troll? No, that's fine. Yeah, her passive was, was over the top.